Welcome to Game Changer Podcast. I'm David Villa here with Diana Villa. And today we're going to talk about flipping the switch. Wow. Flipping the switch. We're going to discuss the peace of God, what to turn off in our lives and what to turn on. And I was looking for, I was going to bring in a, a switch of some sort. Not the kind of switch my mom used to use. My mom used to use a, <laughs> when I was growing up, she used to, I used to, I used to get whippings, man. She used to use that switch. Not that kind of switch. In the old days, you had to pick out your switch. You had to pick right? it out. You had to pick it out. <laughs> go pick out this, you get it, pick out this pick little twig out. that big. And you didn't want to do that either. If she would go back and pick one that was bigger. I was going to say, yeah, you picked the wrong switch and you got to go get another one. That's In right. my household, it wasn't switches. It was whatever could be found. Phone, shoe, <laughs> Amen. wooden spoon. <laughs> That's not the kind of piece, a piece of your tail. We're not talking about that this morning. We're not talking about somebody getting uh, your mom going after you. We're talking about flipping the switch and we're talking about peace that passes understanding. And, um, you know, um, when I think of when I think of the, the, the light switch or the switch that we're going to discuss this morning, you know, I'm thinking about the fact that it can it can be turned on and off. And sometimes we have both switches on. We're going to go over what I'm talking about here in a minute. There's a lot to unpack. And, uh, you know, it may be that over the next, you know, two, three weeks, we talk about the peace of God, um, turn it into a Bible plan. I think that's what we're going to do. But um, so we're not in a hurry this morning, but the world is plagued with, um, you know, with anxiety. It, it's There's so much going on. And, you know, the enemy has done an incredible job of stealing the peace from the children of God, stealing the peace from this world. And, you know, something when I was driving in this morning, it's not in my notes, actually, um, ironically enough, but I was thinking of one of the names of Jesus, you know, and one of the names of Jesus, he's called the Prince of Peace. And he's called the, the Prince of Peace. He reigns over peace. He, he, um, his kingdom is a kingdom of peace. He's the Prince of Peace. And so we're going to talk about what to turn off in our lives and what to turn on. You know, um, one of the things that inspired me, Diana, to, to do this is uh, to talk about this. I don't know if we can get a shot, but I mean, everybody has it. But look at the notifications. I mean, if you can just see, just turn it this way a little bit so you can see. That's okay. This good shot. You can see the notification if you're watching this live. If not, what I've held up is my phone and it's just like yours. <laughs> There's tons of notifications, you know, um, this morning. Mine's I, a little bit different. Mine has a lot more notifications. A lot. Story. Hers is noisy. <laughs> her, her, her noisy. But when you, but, but I, here's the thing we have, we're inundated, you know, there's all types of things. And if you go on your phone, which I've done, you know, before, you know, I've used your phone to pick it up. You're like, Hey, you're use my phone for something. I'll look at it. And there's notifications ranging from, I mean, from like Pinterest, you know, and, and Instagram and Instacart and Wayfair. And, you know, there's, there's Fox news and there's CNN and there's this app and there's that app. There's the, the game changer app. Come on. There's the, um, pray it, it, all of this stuff. A lot of noise. And, um, you know, one of the reasons I came up with this is every morning, you know, um, doing devotions, you know, I was looking at, I'm doing my devotion on my phone and, you know, I was thinking about even picking up an actual Bible and beginning to do it more on that because, you know, like Twitter, for instance, 90% of the tweets, notifications that I get, I really don't care about, but those headlines are sensational. So when you wake up in the morning, you're getting into your Bible time or your time with the Lord, and there are all of these notifications, you know, reaching for your attention, all of this noise. And so really the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, you know, what are you going to turn off so that you can turn me on? You know, or if you have God turned on in your life, is he getting lost in the shuffle with all the other noise? And uh, so I want to talk about that a little bit. And, and really what came, you know, those are the things that are stealing our peace. That's what's stealing the peace that God's the prince of, you know, and that's, that's the, that's the job of the enemy. Let, let me read, let me kind of just read this for a second. Um, you know, I wrote down this, Diana, what's playing in your background. And I know you've, you heard me preach on this before. We talked about this before. We, you probably, probably we've been married 30 years. They just blend together. You probably helped me come up with it, but <laughs> you're probably right. <laughs> Matthew 14. Um, it says, meanwhile, the disciples are in trouble far away from the land. This is right after Jesus fed the multitude in the Bible. So there's a great miracle. A lot of times, by the way, it'll come after a, a big 
portion of provision in your life. God does something major and the enemy comes along and we forget. So the disciples came out of this situation and Jesus said, I'm going to go pray in the mountain and I want you to go to the other side. And so here we pick up in the story. It says, meanwhile, in the 24th verse of Matthew 14, the disciples were in trouble far away from land for a strong wind had arisen and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, I mean, that's late, right? I mean, that's when the enemy a lot of times begins. These notifications sometimes begin then. So about three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking, they were terrified in their fear. They cried out, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once, said, don't be afraid. He said, take courage. I am here. So listen, here's the thing I want to point out though. Peter called him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. So Jesus said, come. So Peter went over the side of the boat. How many know that takes faith, right? Here's the thing. Your faith doesn't necessarily mean that the enemy can't come in and steal your peace or because you walk in faith doesn't mean the enemy can't come in and t- and, and and challenge you through noise that's going to that sometimes will drown out your faith. So so Peter operated in faith, stepped out over the boat, but here's the thing I want to point out. He went walking towards Jesus, but here's this, ready? When he saw the strong wind and waves, he was terrified and began to sink. So as he's making his way to Jesus and he's keeping his eyes focused on the right noise. Here comes all this wrong noise. Here comes all these notifications, the notifications that were there all along, the stuff that's going on around them all along. But when he got out of the boat and he has his eyes on Jesus, here comes, here comes the waves, here comes the wind. And he began to get, you know, from every side. And I think that began to take his peace and then began to sink. You know, I, when I was thinking of peace, I immediately thought of uh, Philippians 4, let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. And, you know, I think that's something that you hold on to in those seasons. Our peace isn't contingent on everything being okay, right? Our peace is found that we've made our requests known to God. We come before him with thanksgiving, knowing and trusting. So I think peace and trust kind of are synonymous. You know, we view peace as something because everything's going well, but we live in a world that there's always something. It may not be catastrophic, right? You might not be looking for a financial miracle or a breakthrough in your marriage, but it might just be simply today you have rowdy kids and you're a stay-at-home mom and it's raining so they can't go outside to, you know, get out some of that energy. So you're you know you're stuck inside and how do you do that like hey god you know let the peace of god that transcends all understanding and what's going on outside rain come in to my household and bring peace even amongst the kids or or whatever and, and i was trying to say that'd be a, a very trivial little thing whatever it is hey it could be just chaos as you're driving into work and traffic's just kind of crazy god despite what's going on around you in the chaos and this accident or that accident or you know this road rage person or whatever the peace of god can guard you and guide you and be present with you and give you peace in that you know because normally in that situation i'm a very i i could be tense right but god wants us to have peace so our peace is found in you know what thank you lord i have a vehicle to get me to work Mm -hmm. thank you lord that i have a family that there are people that are you know have lost their children or lost their loved ones thank you so i think it also you know it's it comes together that how do you have peace you have peace by first you know God making your request known. What is that? Making it known to God and then being being finding ways to be thankful, you know, in that situation so that the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart. It will guard your heart to prevent the noise from penetrating because the issues of life flow from our heart. So if we can get uh, you know, make our request known have thanksgiving make our request known be have thanksgiving the peace of god that passes all understanding will guard our heart and guess what our mind because we live in a world that anxiety is everywhere Mm. um i was somewhere yesterday and um it was i was i was at an appointment and something came up and they were just talking in general hey how are you doing you know um girl things nails you know hair whatever and so you're making small talk and they were just mentioned something about um in upping their anxiety medicine as they were as they were talking um all i could do in my heart and in my mind was like lord 
I know that you can give peace even beyond what this medication, they were just talking about some difficulties traveling. And I'm not against medication. I think it's, I think God gives people knowledge and stuff like that, but are we also relying? So maybe there's seasons that God, that brings that into your life, but is it um, taking over the peace that God wants to give you or the joy well, God the world wants doesn't, to give you? The world doesn't know. So the, what you're, I think, you know, I'm, I'm not there, I wasn't there, and, but if I can add to this, because we've all been there, your heart breaks because they, they don't know the peace. They don't know the Prince of Peace, right? They don't know the Prince of Peace. And so there's nothing wrong with, with yeah. medication. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with where your noise is coming from. And, you know, the reality is, you know, who do you turn to? And, you know, it, it, Diana mentioned, you know, those things may be trivial, but the reality is, the reality is I would say that most people, I mean, there's things that we all go through that are major in, in life. And there's, there's things that you're going through right now that are possibly major. There's people listening that you're like, you have no idea what I'm going through. But the reality is the mo most of the things that affects your peace, most of the noise is just the day to day things that you and I go through. And something that came to my mind or, or did I thought of when Dinah was talking was the enemy. We, we talk about this often, but the Bible says he comes to steal, kill and destroy. And I say this often, you know, I've said it for years and years in preaching that he may not be able to destroy you. You know, he may have given up on that because you've been bought by the blood of Jesus. You're covered. You know, you don't belong to him. and He may not be able to destroy you. He maybe, maybe he's given up on that. Maybe he can't, you know, he can't kill you. You know, maybe he's given up on that, but he can steal something from you. And what came to my mind is this, and this is something that's worth writing down and remembering. He wants a piece of your peace. He wants a piece of your peace. And if he can steal a piece of your peace every day, or if he can steal a piece of your peace in the morning, it affects everything else. And so... I wrote down here in the notes, and, and really, Diana um, went over really the whole lesson because it's actually, we're going to get into Philippians 4, and the whole thing's about Philippians 4, so she, perfect scripture to read there, but turn turn down the noise, and so the turn off and turn on thing is, so turn down the noise, that's, what, that's the turn off, and then I'm going to give you something to replace it with, ready? Meditate on these things, that's the turn on. Again, turn down the noise, turn off meditate on these things, turn on. I want to give you a couple of scriptures that were actually in um, version. These are added at the last minute of my notes. And uh, it was actually in version on the the, um, you know, the stories they have yesterday. But I really thought it was perfect. And then Psalm 77, and I put two versions here. I want to read them both. But Psalm 77, 11 and 12, it says, But then I recall all you have done, O Lord. I remember your wonderful deeds of long ago. They are constantly in my thoughts. I cannot stop thinking about your mighty works. And the Message Bible says it this way, and I love the Message Bible too. Once again, I'll go over what God has done. See, it's, it's, it sounds like that person has gone through this before. It sounds like that you have some past victories when you read it that way. Once again, you know, once again, I'll go over what God has done. You need to keep a list of, see, we, sometimes we keep the list of what the, of what the enemy wants, right? We have the list of things that distract us, the li list of things that can take us out, that can bring us down that can cause doubt but do you have a list you know, do you have a note we need to open our notes section and i'm talking david needs to do this we need to open our notes section and say things god's done from big to small from small to big it doesn't matter and then we need to go hey as the message version of psalm 77 11 and 12 says once again i'll go over what god has done you know that goes well, along the second part of that philippians 4 that i was reading and i do see it in your notes but um you know where it was talking about um and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The next verses under that, and finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if is there is anything worthy of praise, think on these things, what you have learned and received and have heard and seen in me. Practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. Whatever is lovely, whatever is honorable, whatever is pure, whatever is commendable, whatever is excellent, God's been good to you. So if you only have to hang on to something that's already happened mm -hmm. to get you through today and give you the peace and the strength and the joy and the hope and the faith for today, yeah. do it because think on these things think on these things you have to think you have to know of something to think on it right yeah i can't think about what it's like to walk on the moon from an i can imagine it i guess but if i haven't experienced it i really can't 
think of it as part of who I am. Like, hey, I experienced that. So the goodnesses of God in your life, think on these things. And, and, the, th- and, the, re- and the way you think on it is you recall past victories. The message version of Philippians 8 and 9, I love it as well. I'm going to read that. Diana just read the uh, New Living Translation, I believe. But it says in message, summon it all up, friends. I'd say to you, I'd say you'll do best by filling, filling your minds and meditating. There's that word meditate on things true, noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious, the best, not the worst, the beautiful, not the ugly, things to praise, not things to curse. Put into practice what you've learned from me, what you heard and saw and realized. Do that, and God who makes everything work together will work you into his most excellent harmonies. The word meditate means, you know, we often think of meditate. Sometimes believers don't use that word often. It's, I mean, it's, it's in the message there. It's also, I think in the King James originally, I think the word is in the King James version of that scripture. I'm not really sure, but we don't really use the word meditate often because, you know, there's, there's also new age and a lot of other things that maybe get into meditating. So we kind of just push that word aside, but the Bible says meditate on these things. The meditating definition says think deeply or focus one's mind for a period of time in silence or with the aid of chanting okay uh, and so so chant it i mean speak it you know you know the thing is the enemy is loud and clear you know even these notifications if you click on one of the notifications maybe you have twitter or instagram or one of these notifications and you know and you're in it's and it's there and you click on that and and you when you do there's a video sometimes there's a there's a there's a soundtrack sometimes right there's there's a there's a there's a clip Possibly, maybe it's not just text or just an article, but sometimes there's also noise that comes along with that. So you know the enemy uses his voice. So use your voice and begin to think deeply or meditate on what God's done. And you know the the thing that came to um, I want to I want to identify <clears throat> what these things are. Okay, so when you flip the switch on and off, and you have the the noise on around you, the noise of the world, and it doesn't mean it's all bad. It just means that it's noise. But when you have the, this noise on and it really impacts your day-to-day life, I put down the phrase, actually it came from one of our crew. We had a lot of, uh, when I put this out last week, we had a ton of input on titles. I've weaved, if you guys haven't seen this or not, I've weaved most of all the titles into these notes. And one of the titles was Peace Disruptors. Peace Disruptors, what's keeping you from God's desire for peace in your life. And that's what those are. Those are, those are things that disrupt the peace there, there, you know, if you look at God, Jesus as the Prince of peace, I didn't say that the word of God says that he's a Prince of peace. So there's a kingdom where peace reigns. Here's the thing. Then the disruptors aren't invited. They're not welcome, right? They're disruptors. They're bandits They're They need to be thrown out of the kingdom, but what's keeping you from God's desire, peace in your life. And, and so real quick, Diana, what is the peace that passes understanding that what is that? And so go ahead with your comment, but I want to dive into that a little bit in the last few minutes. And again, we may not probably won't will not get through all of this today well you know i was thinking when you said peace disruptors i was thinking that doesn't mean that you don't have peace but you get distracted how many of you been in a conversation and um you are talking with someone and you're you know passionate about whatever it is or it's something that you you know you you need to get out or it's whatever that task is whatever that conversation maybe it's just enjoying life you know, and from a spouse standpoint, maybe if you're, you know, in conversation, just like, hey, how's your week been checking in on that or your children, and they have so many notifications that they can't really focus on the moment. So I think one of those things are that maybe right now it's it's turning those things off so that you can focus on what's going to be your solution or your answer, which is always it'll always thread back to Jesus. Jesus is the answer. So one of the things I've done recently personally is um, I have started utilizing on my phone and my my kids will probably laugh at me, but like the timer, like we're at night notifications go off except for like people that are in my favorites. I also somehow keep triggering it during the day. So people are like, I'm trying to get a hold of you. I'm like, my phone never rang, (laughs) but I am not the most tech savvy. Um, I could be, I just don't focus on it. I have other things rather than to focus on my phone, but one of the things that I've noticed in that is that I, even if I don't completely wake up before doing that, even if I don't didn't complete, it still disrupted the rest that I was needing. And so here's the thing, even if it's not a bad thing, even if the notifications aren't a bad thing, maybe it's preventing mm-hmm. you from walking in complete 
peace or yeah. complete faith or complete hope, or you're just not focused on it, right? You have so many distractions. How many has gone through our day? Like you start your day mission minded that these are the tasks I need to handle today, but all these distractions happen. Mm -hmm. And then you get to the end of the day, it's like, I didn't accomplish anything that I really needed to. What did I do today? So I think sometimes those notifications or those things in our life, those you know little nuances that come up are designed not to cause us to, you know, give up our faith or our, our, our trust in God, but just to kind of like disrupt. blur it and disrupt it so that we're not yeah. walking in it. We're not present in it. We can be in a conversation. How many has kind of been in a conversation and, you know, our minds elsewhere and really at there you're supposed to respond and like you really don't know how to respond because even though you were sitting there, you weren't present in yeah. the conversation. Yeah. So I think it's. Don't look at me. <laughs> she kind of side eyed me. You saw that? She's like, you present? Y'all didn't see that if you're listening on Apple. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead so, babe. you know, I think some of those things is turning those <laughs> off, not because they're a bad thing. Those things may not be a bad thing. Yeah. They just may be preventing you from completely walking in the fullness of what God has for you in this season. And, you know, in peace that passes understanding, you know, it means that no matter our circumstances, right? Because their circumstances today, right now, big, small small big to someone else you're facing circumstances no matter our circumstances whether we're facing death you know torture arrest you know ridicule i mean something s simple or major we'll be able to handle it in stride our faith in god dispels fear and we have to understand this really the root of this is all fear based and the anxiety right the pressures of life the what if what if not and so forth and so the faith in God dispels fear, conquers the enemy and leaves us content in whatever life brings. So <clears throat> a, f a favorite Bible passage, you know, we've gone through here uh, and there's more we're going to get to, but you know, it's Philippians four when it talks about, you know, uh, the peace of God, especially we turn to this when we're in times of strife and stress, struggle, right? And apostle Paul and it's, and it's, he wrote this, uh, Philippians four, in the early church in Philippi, and, he, and he, so he, he winds the letter, right, when he closes here, and he says, and Diana read this, but I'm gonna read it again, don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God, and this is the craziest thing, it transcends all understanding. It's it, So if you go, I don't understand how God can give me peace in what I'm going through, that is exactly what the challenge is that God's up to because he says it right here. It transcends all understanding. He, he literally says it. It's in the verse. So he says that peace that transcends or surpasses or is not able to be understood will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And so the notion of God's peace being able to, to guard, right, or to protect us that's welcoming. That's that is what that piece is. It's it's like a healing to our souls. And so, you know, uh, some translations, you know, uh, use the word surpass understanding, right? And we hear a preacher, you know, his piece that surpasses understanding or some tr say transcend. But the meaning is God's peace is so great that we can't possibly comprehend its fullness. It's so great that it even overshadows the biggest concerns that we have. And that's what it means. And so, so what is the peace that passes understanding? How can we get to that peace? And so what does peace mean? Right. And I don't, I don't want to get deep and we're going to get into that next time. We're not going to get into the deep part of it here, but I want to look at what peace means. I want to look at it because that's what, that's the medicine this world needs, you know? And sometimes <clears throat> the door maybe because, you know, for instance, you mentioned the appointment yesterday, you know, uh, maybe that's not the time just to jump right in because sometimes we, we as Christians are too Johnny on the spot. Like, hey, you know, God's got peace for you. Let me tell you, that might not be the time to say it. That might be the time to start praying for them. That might be the time to, for the God's making you aware, you know, let's say it's a normal appointment that you go to, which this particular one is, that could be the time to begin to plant the seeds, begin to pray for it because, you know, um, and it's just God opening that door. And uh, just like this message is, you know, for you that are listening right now, this could just be the beginning of God saying, look, I've got an answer for you. The antidote for your anxiety, your stress, your situation, you know, the answer that you, the answer for the non-answer that you think you have is my peace. And um, what peace. is your first reaction? I would say that's actually interesting that you said that because, you know, my first as a, as a, 
as a mom, I'm always a mom. Even though I don't have kids in my household, I mom everyone. We have some construction. It's our, we had to replace our roof, and there she was, was some momming them. I was, <laughs> I was momming them because I'm like, maybe instead of doing this, you probably should have done this. They're so, like, maybe I'm gonna shoot you with this nail gun. <laughs> Like, yeah. hey, lady, maybe if you mind your business, I can get about my day. But um, I'm always momming. But my first instinct when and when this person was sharing is like I wanted to mom them because they're a young lady. And, and then I was like almost the Lord quickened in my heart quickly, like, no, pray. So she was speaking. I was just like, Lord, you know. And he does. And so, you know, sometimes it's about is our first reaction to respond and give an answer, a real snazzy answer to somebody or to that to that situation. Or is our first response to mm-hmm. go to the Lord in prayer? You know, as we were going through those notes, I remembered um, a scripture in the Bible that are some of my favorites. One of the ones, the chapter Second Corinthians 4, it's a, a chapter um, that I go to a lot. I, I quote it a lot in my own life. But it talks about, that's where it says that we have these jars of clay um, and we're perplexed. Uh, persecute on both sides, but not uh, struck down. And you go further. When you go to the end of that verse, it says, so we focus on what is and not to focus on the things that are seen because the things that are seen, the wind, the noise, the struggle, the fears, the anxiety, you know, whatever that is, the rowdy kids, they are temporary. Yeah. But to place your focus on the things that are unseen because those are internal, eternal, you know, focusing on, hey, this may be happening, but God is good and he's going to see me through. So wherever we place our focus that is where our emotions go. So if you're focusing on the situations in front of you or the craziness, like usually the kids, I, I can think about when the kids are kind of just going crazy. If I focus on their craziness, before the end of the day, we were all crazy, screaming at each other, like, ah, I was, you know, mad woman mom. But if I was able to go, no, I'm not gonna focus on where they're at and allow that to, to cause me to disrupt my emotions, to go, wait, time out and come back, I could rein it all back in, right? So I think wherever you, if, if, if anything in today's uh, message is, yes, God's desire for you is peace. And how do you get peace? I think you have to focus on the things that are not seen. And that means you may have to turn off some of those things for a season. Um, but if you are able to do that, I think the peace of God that transcends all understanding will be with you, it will cover you, it will guard you, it will help you, it will cause you to have joy in spite of what you're going through. Um, You know, there's been times in my life that I feel like while I was going through some of the toughest seasons of my life, God used my peace in spite of to minister. So um, I think it's just one of those things to focus on on God and, and go through those things. And I think God can give you the peace. Yeah. And so let's wrap this first. Uh, and we're going to bring this back next week. And um, I you know, want to close out the last couple minutes here. And I want to, you know, address one of the comments. Somebody, you know, uh, mentioned their business. But I want to say this. Peace is not, you know, um, peace is not the peace is the answer. But it's not the answer. Let me let me explain. Peace is what is what you need today. It's the answer for what you are experiencing. It's for what I'm experiencing. But peace doesn't bring the answer. It's where the answer is found. So let me let me explain that. In other words, you're going through something where you need answers. You need direction. You need a miracle. You need a breakthrough. You know, in that business. And you know, uh, the one person that mentioned that. Let me just say this: peace is peace is not the answer to the situation you're experiencing. It's not going to be connecting the dots, so to speak, but it is the overall answer. It's where the answer is found. So for instance, really quick, you know, Jesus was, you know, multiple times, but this one time here, even we mentioned earlier, he, when he got into the boat, the wind was going on and Peter got out of the boat. You know, when he, when Jesus picked him up out of the water, there's more to that story. And he walked him back to the boat and The Bible says at the end of that passage, when Jesus and Peter got back in the boat, when Jesus got in the boat, the winds and waves became peaceful. So Jesus is the answer. What that answer is going to look like to your business and to your situation, I don't know. I don't know how it's going to come. You know, you know, there's things like that that I'm praying for and believing for. And but here's the thing. The answers are one thing, but the answer is peace because that's where the answers are found. And so I want to I want to leave that with you, and we're going to pick up on this. We've got a lot more in peace, so don't miss next week. And if you want to be reminded of what we're doing, let me just give you a couple of ways you can do that. Number one, 
many of you, um, I think over 3,200 people in the last couple of months have downloaded our Game Changer app. I wanna thank you for that. It's a resource, so make sure you go to any app store um, and uh, you can, it's Apple, Google, it's on Roku, I mean, it's everywhere, and you can just type in Game Changer by IPD Agency. We had to identify it that way, but Game Changer by IPD Agency is our marketplace ministry app. You can get reminded of a lot of things that we do. You can get all the resources there. We wanna invite you to download that. Also, make sure you, uh, if you're listening, um, and subscribe to us on Apple and Spotify. Also, go to our YouTube page and subscribe and uh, so you're notified when we go live. But we're gonna come back next time and we're gonna talk more about peace and we're gonna get into Philippians 4. But today, I just pray, Father, I pray that your peace that transcends understanding, that surpasses understanding. God, I pray for that business right now, that person. Lord, I pray, God, right now for every mom, every dad, every person, God, this, that's that's going through transition and change, every person that's struggling with anxiety, every bit of noise is just pouring in one way after the other. God, the enemy is trying to bombard us with all this noise. I pray we flip the switch today. By flipping the switch, we trust you. We trust you. And that's a vulnerable place to be, but you've never let us down. We recall and we remember every time you've ever come through for us. And I just pray your peace in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. See you guys next time.